first started sailing probably when I was uh, about five or six down Solcombe in Devon. Um, my father would uh, gather myself and my mother up and plonk us in a little rowing boat and we'd row all the way out to his little 36 foot yacht he had and, uh, and that was um, wet and cold and miserable. <laughs> and, uh, I was stuck in a great big life jacket and the right type of waterproofs and everything else and uh, um, I would, wouldn't last for too long because mother would always get upset and go drag us back home again, much to my father's um, disgust why they couldn't put up with this. Um, and then as, um, as I moved into dinghies and faster toppers and blazers and things, things became a lot more fun. And, um, I think that's basically where children have a lot more fun in the smaller boats and then move on to yachts later. I think us, uh, as we're older, we, we thought, why aren't our children in these 30-foot boats or 25-foot boats sailing around? It's because they, they don't go fast and they're not that much fun for them. Um, I think dinghies and lasers and toppers and such like are great fun when you keep other kids around in there. You spend half your time falling out of them and getting back in again. That's great fun. And then from that you can move on and uh, start getting more serious into bigger boats. But uh, I, I really enjoyed my younger times playing around in, in small dinghies. In fact, I still do. <laughs> Uh, the highest sailing honour I achieved would be, <laughs> would be to um, the honour of, uh, of um, sailing and racing on any of these J classes. It's been, a, it's been an honour just to be on board them. Um, to actually, the honours um, achieved by racing would be um, the ones we've um, achieved on Ranger. Um, in Newport, winning the J class regatta there, and again in Falmouth, winning a J class regatta there, and the numerous. Um, Maxi Worlds and uh, uh, Antigua Race Weeks, etc., we've won over the years. Most memorable sailing activity I've had is. Uh, Probably coming up the bay in Newport, uh, Rhode Island last year, where um, we had Barshida and Ranger just exchanging tacks continuously all the way up Newport Harbor, one after the other, couldn't get past each other. Um, and also a few more of those days as well up in Newport, where we were sailing past Castle Hill, very, very close racing and um, you know, very, uh, very intense trying to get past each other, but um, a very, very memorable that, that part. first experience of them was um, with Valshida and, uh, and uh, racing on board, board Valshida many years ago um, was the first time I got on board a J-Class and to get involved. Favorite, my favorite water to go racing in would probably be Sardinia. Um, just as uh, you get the wind and it's flat and you're going up Bomb Alley and it's a, uh, all the boats very close together. Um, you can also get out of the Bonifacio Straits where there's more wind. A lot, a lot, to, a lot of intricate uh, maneuvers and lots of very rocky coastline. Oh, it's a pretty place to go racing as well. During a race, never, never really relax. Um, there may be a, a sit down for a minute or maybe try and shove a sandwich down, but um, no, no, no real time to sort of sit and relax. When I'm sailing, I relax depending on where I am in the world. Um, in Newport, we used to play polo a lot. Uh, in Caribbean, we go kite surfing a lot. Um, in England, I go fly fishing. <laughs> um, and when I'm not doing that, I'm playing with my small child, which is uh, obviously not so relaxing, but it's good fun. <laughs>
Uh, yes, uh, well, wife and child and another one arriving in about six weeks' time. So uh, that's, uh, it's going to be a proper family. They're tearing around all over the place. Home is Limington, Hampshire. That's where, we, that's where our base is. Um, my, wife, my wife worked in the industry for about 15 years um, as a chef on a boat, so she understands the sort of the intricacies of how the boating life works. Um, and also she has rather a lot of friends in Mallorca and in Antigua and in Newport and wherever we go on a boat, she tends to have friends based there. So is uh, very willing to actually to come out for a little holiday in Antigua for, for three or four months. <laughs> so she doesn't mind that at all, or, or Mallorca, or last year we are in... Um, in Rhode Island, Newport, for uh, a long period of time, so she came out there for three months. I couldn't sail, I'm not sure what I would do, to be honest. Um, probably property development of some kind, um, which um, a lot, lot of uh, people in, in yachts seem, seem to get into um, because it happens to be something that wherever we go um, we have a house, we buy a house there, we have time, we're sitting there over the winter, we've done it up and um, we all seem to think that, that is quite a good way of uh, something to get into but um, I'm not quite sure what I would do to be honest. My first job when I left school would have been working at the Island Cruising Club in Salkham in Devon, um, teaching sailing. Uh, my first job when I was at school was building dry stone walls on Dartmoor, <laughs> which was uh, a bit sort of out of the way, but, um, but yeah, the first proper job would have been working there at the Island Cruising Club, teaching sailing, and becoming an RWA instructor, then an RWA senior instructor, etc. There are eight permanent crew on Ranger, um, and they're there 24-7, every day of the week. There's uh, somebody on watch, um, and there's a uh, full workforce all the time. It takes eight people to keep it going. Top out at 40, um, but uh, usually around 32 to 35. Uh, is, a, is, a, is the number we would normally be racing with. Sometimes we can get a few more. It can get quite crowded, but too many people in the way sometimes. If not, everybody's not got a specific job. But um, when it comes down to it, 32 is a pretty, pretty good number to be racing with. To be in the race crew, um, we selected to be in the race crew. Most of our race crew have been with us for five years longer. Um, they've uh, all come from the background of the America's Cup or Volvo, Whitbread, um, and other sorts of racing, but generally it's the Volvo, Whitbread, or America's Cup sailors. Um, but they've all been as a team and they've all known, known each other for many years. Um, so I'm, I'm almost, I mean, I've been on Ranger for nearly five years, and I'm the new guy, as it were. Uh, as they've all known each other nearly all their lives. And it makes for a good team, not just um, having raced together, but uh, known each other. And they've all raced together on, on other boats in the past, America's boats, Volvo boats, um, and Whitbread boats, some of them, I'll show their age. <laughs> the, uh, so they've, um, they know, it's a sort of a feeling, they know each other and what they're doing, so that helps a lot.
Um, Ranger's been up for charter, but um, nobody's chartered Ranger as yet for a private cruise. Um, we've uh, had a few inquiries. Um, quite often get asked that question, but um, uh, the owner has not yet had anybody chartered there. Um, we have a, a computer tablet which runs through Wi-Fi through a, a laptop um, that's running a, a program, a program we use called Expedition and that has predicted angles and um, waypoints put in for, for marks and buoys etc and it'll give you the angle to sail, the angle you'll need to tack at to make that but the people that are sailing have got very very good gut reaction. Um, we have Earl Williams that drives the boat most of the time. Brad Butterworth is our tactician. These guys are you know, the top of their game. Um, a navigator, um, Mike Quilter, is, operates that tablet. As he's quite often puts the tablet down and gets up, looks up, and says, "Do we need to go that way?" Or that's the angle we're tacking at. So it's um, a lot of it's a lot of it's done navigation of the tablet. But that's it. That's the only real navigation. The wind. Um, the wind and the um, instruments that we use for the, for the BNG units we have, a lot relies on those. We need to know exactly where the wind's coming from, exactly what degree um, we're driving at. Uh, we've got mass goes up um, 180 for need to know what the difference is, the wind at the top, where the, where the unit is, where the wand is, as to where the wind is further down the mast, because that's where the centre of effort is. So there's calculations that that unit does for us. So we've got in the region of 13 to 14 BNG units showing us data all the time of wind angles and um, backstay or forestay pressures, etc. So quite a lot of it relies on that. But the actual judgment of let's tack underneath this guy or let's lee bow this guy is very much a, uh, a human decision. the captain's always in charge of the boat. Um, the race crew may come on and uh, we have a, a gentleman that helms the boat, a professional professional helmsman. Um, I, I helmed a bit in port and uh, he's uh, when we had a different ruling and um, Earl now drives the boat pretty much. The owner drives sometimes but not that much. Other J's are slightly different, their owners drive a bit more um, depending on their situation but uh, I'm always in charge of the boat. The captain is always in charge of the boat. For a Ranger, we like a little bit more wind. We're a bit, a little bit heavier, and um, a little bit more wind is better for us. I know Valshida is better in lighter wind, sub 12 knots. Valshida gets a little bit of an advantage. I think the Pacific has got to be one of the finest places to go sailing. I mean, it's the most unbelievable islands and, uh, and beaches, and the trade winds blowing right across. So you can start at one end of the Pacific, and six months later, have never really changed. You could sail right across it in one go. Um, and for the actual sailing-wise, the British Virgin Islands are just an unbelievable place. People say, oh, they're all too crowded, etc. But there aren't many places you can go for 20 minutes or two hours in relatively flat water and have a bar at the end of it <laughs> every time. <laughs> 